What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new to the channel too and want to the subscribe button, that would help me out immensely. Continuing the momentum from this great week. We have some early mail and it is the package I have been expecting the past month and a half. A huge shout out to RG Japan for again, always taking care of me. Finally, our full brake system overhaul for the Mark II is here. Cannot emphasize and appreciate them enough. Thank you so much, RG Japan, for always taking care of me. Thank you, thank you. So here to the right, we have our front rotors from TF Works. Here we have our rear rotors from RG Japan. Again, with a full Project U setup, we have the front pads here, the rear pads. We have the steel braided Teflon lines. And then here we have our works bell short boss hub so we can mount the vertex steering wheel. I am beyond hyped to get this all installed. Look, just look how pretty the front pads are. The rear pads with the rear rotor, just one with the slotted setup. No need to do drilled and slotted. Car's not making that much horsepower or nor do I intend it to. But my favorite part are the Teflon steel braided lines. Just look at this presentation and look at the color combo. I love this so much and I am hyped. So hyped. Incredibly hyped. And then with the short hub, I'm going to install this probably in the next week or two whenever I can get in alignment first so my steering wheel isn't super cocked left and or right. But I'm really happy with this as well. This is just two good guys. I'm super content with my purchase and honestly this setup is just absolutely beautiful. I can't emphasize that enough. And also we will be using some DOT4 Multool RBF 600. I run it in the Skyline and it runs great. Braking is great, braking is very responsive and it has a much higher rolling point. The only thing is this you would have to change out twice a year if you drive hard and consistently. And also for the install, I highly recommend you use double end flare nut wrenches or two blind wrenches. Don't use an open wrench because you run the chances of stripping the nut that connects the brake line and you know these cars are 25 years old and potentially have some rust issues. So these will definitely be your best friend with your install. So just test fitting the work spell short boss hub. This is the part number I'm using for my JZX100. And here it is, outside the box. Definitely pretty short and it accommodates the bolts for my vertex steering wheel. Very, very nice. Also included are a lock washer and a new nut. We got some hard grade, don't know what grade the metal is, but they look like they're a pretty decent quality. And then um, resistor for the horns. And then I believe we have this for the SRS. Don't quote me on that. Let's use some YouTube magic to get the Mark II on jack stands. Mark II is on jack stands. Yet again, I went ahead and PP blasted all of the brake line fittings. As you can see there, so we got a hard line going to a soft line, which is probably corroded and just, again, ready to be changed out. I just need to PP blast the bolts to the caliper bracket, front and rear. But everything is looking good. For this rear coil over here, if you can see, I'm gonna take out the bottom bolt to the coil body and see if I can lower this another inch or two. I know when I was adjusting it three videos ago, it wouldn't go anymore, but I'm hopefully assuming, cross my fingers, that something is just preventing it from going any lower. But if I can get another inch or inch and a half, right height will be perfect. And if right height can be perfect, then I'm gonna go ahead and test fit the Skylines VSKFs. Also, one more thing before we begin, I like to be as transparent as I possibly can with this YouTube channel financially in terms of how much parts cost me in case you guys want to buy a JZX100 Mark II Chaser Cresto, all the chassis are the same, or if you want to build an R32 Skyline, I like to let you guys know the prices I paid through RC Japan. So for the whole brake kit, including the front rotors I got from TF Works, this setup ran me, I want to say about 14, almost $1,500. 
including shipping. I mean, I forgot how much each individual product cost me, but from the invoices I looked at previously, the average is between $1,400 and $1,500. You can definitely save probably two, $300 more by cross-referencing rotors and brake pads and probably lines online. All right, less than 10 minutes later, we got the front right braking system fully disassembled. So we got the hard line disconnected from the rubber line. The size for the nut here is, you guessed it, a 10 millimeter. Be sure to use your 10 millimeter flare tube line wrench. The bolt in the back of the caliper is going to be a 14 millimeter. And the two bolts here that hold the caliper bracket are going to be 17 millimeter. And then we got the, I don't know what you want to call this part. I guess the bracket, if that's the <laughs> caliper. But I got these two top bolts removed, which are also going to be a 14 millimeter. And just inspecting the rotor, I'm not too sure if this is OEM or not in the original rotor, but yeah, it's definitely really crusty and really old. But if you can see here on the pads, no name pads, these things are seriously full of life. They look brand new. So I have the Project Mew Teflon steel braided lines out. What I like about these is not only do they supply you with all the correct washers and E-fittings, they also label each brake line for you. So we got like front left, front right, rear right, rear left. So we're going to be needing front right there. In the midst of that, I'm going to go ahead and clean the threads to the bolts that hold in the caliper. The bolt that holds in the brake line to the caliper is good. Then also the clip here that holds the brake line, just gonna give that a good cleaning as well. A little cheat code to compress the pistons back into your caliper is, as you can see here, C-clamp, your old brake pad, being mindful about the banjo bolt fitting and then just slowly intertwining the C-clamp and it should compress both of the pistons. So this is now taken care of, but before we install the rotors, I'm gonna go ahead and take a wire wheel and clean the hub to the best of my abilities. Update, literally three and a half to four hours later, finally got the Project Mew rotor, lines, and pad done on the front right side. Ran into a ton of complications. I had to bring out my brother Warren to help me. I just couldn't figure it out. Disassembled everything, reassembled everything. For some reason, once the caliper portion was on, piston receded, it would, it was stuck. I couldn't figure it out. I thought maybe the rotor was warped. I checked all the rotors. The rotor was not warped. I checked to see if there's any um, obstruction between the rotor and the caliper itself. No obstructions. Maybe the pad or the hardware was binding on something. Nothing was binding. Ended up putting the stock set back up, wrenched the same issue, and then pretty much I did this job five, six times with Warren and came to the conclusion that we had to mess around with the guide pins here. We had to push them in a little bit more and then we proceeded to bleed up the caliper and now it spins freely with the whole caliper and caliper bracket assembly on and dude, it just, I should have been done by now and this totally burnt us out but Really grateful that this is working now and it's feeling really, really good. Really wasn't that complex getting the, say, brake lines in as well. But, oh God, that was just, that was horrible. But now I'm going to hopefully talk out the front left side with these and then I'm gonna do the rears tomorrow. Not even 10 minutes in and I'm already done with the Passenger side guys that is super aggravating some bad energy going on over there in the driver's side, but Disassembled and reassembled everything torque down to spec line assembled Honestly less than 10 minutes and that's just I don't know what's going on, but I would highly recommend you guys Replace your guide pins. I went ahead and give these a good four to five taps on each side to ensure that they sit properly and nothing's binding I just need to pump more fluid 
to the line so we can compress the piston. But I mean, that looks looks really nice. Really stoked, really stoked. Oh, really happy guys. So now tomorrow I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out the rears. I mean, this hopefully shouldn't take too long knock on wood, but again, I do want to see if I can get another inch or two lower in the rear. Rear passenger side rotor is out. Took a little bit of finessing. What I did was first make sure your parking brake is disengaged because if it's engaged, then these shoes here are creating pressure and will not allow the rotor to come off. So disengage that. I went ahead and PB blasted all of the lugs. Went ahead and also did the center bore here and then using my trusty, I think this is like a 10 or 15 pound hammer, get the shit out of it. Here we are, this thing is crusty, rusty, and full of sea life. But now I'm gonna go ahead and use my wire brush to clean the hub and some brake clean to clean all the inner components you see here. We'll go ahead and put in the new pads, reset the piston and the caliper and reassemble everything. And that's pretty much it. Gonna wait for my brother to get home so he can help me breed the brakes, breed, bleed the brakes. And then in the midst of him waiting, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the coilovers as well. Rear left is completed. Looking very nice. Nice and silver with the turquoise Tiffany blue accent. Went ahead and cleaned up the caliper and caliper bracket too with a wire brush. Doesn't look as crusty as it used to, but not bad, not bad. Now we just gotta knock out the rear right and we're ready to bleed. Ladies and gentlemen, the install of the Project Mew brake system overall is completed. Just got done with the rear right. Everything cooperated, I'm really happy with that. Brake line, all the bolts, everything torqued down to spec. Double checked everything else up front, everything is good, torqued down to spec. So now it is time to bleed this system again. So we'll be starting from the furthest to the brake master cylinder, which will be the rear left. We'll go to the rear right. And front left, front right, double check all the fittings, make sure nothing leaks. I'm gonna triple check the torque specs on all the bolts, and once that's all good, we'll go ahead and do the in-bed period. The Mark II is officially done being bled. A huge shout out to my brother Warren. We did each corner about four times. The fronts are solid. The rears are pretty good. I don't know, I'm kind of suspicious about the rears. When I reinstalled everything, the piston, wasn't really cooperating, but I think a little bit more driving and a little bit more pumping of the brakes will alleviate the tension on the piston or bring the piston out. And this side is kind of making some noise, but these are very aggressive pads and also rotors. But in terms of coolant, everything's holding temp. This is kind of the main voyage. Just going to take it around the block to be safe, but everything checks out. We'll go ahead and schedule our alignment to Eden Customs. And I'm gonna have them look at the brake system when I'm done. Quick update, drive was almost successful. Fronts were solid, the rear right is solid, but we came to a conclusion that, brother, what happened? This rotor was reading almost 500 degrees. And where the pads at? So you guys, you can see there's uneven wear right in the middle. So pretty much, long story short, this guide pin is seized on, so it is applying more force to one side opposed to the other. That's why these rotors look like that. So our attempt is to back this out, re-grease it and see if it'll work. If not, I'll just run to my local all parts store and see if we can find a guide pin. All right, yeah, okay, Mark II. Mark II, this poor Mark II, man. 
this thing, this thing shouldn't have been neglected like she is. Oh yeah, that too, don't worry. Paint come in 2023. Big bro is the man. So we pretty much just pried while we use the Dewalt I dug out to pretty much. Wait, hold on, light. So I mean, look at, so this should have some form of like lubrication on it. And if you can see those brown spots, it's like rust and disease and then you can't pick it up. Oh yeah, you can see in there, it's just bone dry, rusted out. So it's gonna hit with some WD-40, clean with a Q-tip and then smother it with some white lithium grease. We are back from our final maiden voyage and the Mark II's braking system is top notch. We fixed the issue as you saw in the previous clip. So when the piston pushes on the pad, the guide pins are supposed to move simultaneously, but how this was moving was like at an angle when you would compress the brake pedal. So we got that uneven wear, but good thing we caught that in time where the rotor didn't warp and or the pads didn't deform. So a huge shout out to Warren. On that note, the most important part of a braking system is your guide pins. Forget the piston, forget the pad, forget the rotor. Guide pins are everything. And also on that note, on my own time, my free time, I'm going to take all the guide pins out, re-grease them, clean them up all nice. Just for peace of mind so I don't ever run into that issue again because I am not spending another 300 plus dollars on rotors. The Mark II is also running beautifully right now. No coolant leaks. Coolant water temps are exactly where they should be, just a little bit lower with the SAR low temp thermostat. Transmission shifts like butter. The 1JZ runs amazing. And I'm very, very grateful for that. The only thing that is kind of concerning to me right now is how much oil is leaking from the pan. It's not terrible, but I definitely need to address the front, rear, and oil pan gasket and seals. So I'll have to do that. I'll definitely do that sometime beginning of next year. So all we need to do now is just an alignment, register the car, and we can finally have the Mark II daily drivable. It's been a long couple of months, still quite the list of things to do on the Mark II maintenance wise and definitely performance aftermarket wise. But again, the Skyline is my top priority. And on that note guys, thank you so very much for the continuous summit support. And if you're new to the channel too, and want to hit the subscribe button, that'll help me out immensely. And remember, aim high, drive low. We'll catch you next video. Take care.